shit that's going down. That's all. Now, I don't care. Let me make it clear. I don't care about your anything, transgender anything, because I have my own agenda, revolution, uh, issues. Uh, it, it's called freedom, nothing less. F complete freedom for more than one half of the world's population, no matter the vagina born, no matter the color, no matter anything. I have every right for that to be my revolution. And given the fact that I actually am close to 60 year old mother, uh, breasts have fed, body has birthed, lived as a woman, uh, so, uh, deal with the consequences daily, daily of a woman that doesn't look a fucking thing like that at 61 and doesn't want to. Could, did you miss a stereotype? Did you fucking miss a stereotype or, or an industry that just represents slavery and death to women? Could you have fucking, why not just do anything you want and be whatever you want? But do not tell me what pronouns I can and can't use. Nobody can, censorship works so beautifully for the causes that they insist you have to embrace, even if you are the club that they just kicked the fucking door down into and didn't even, didn't even step in respectfully didn't even suggest and and if you want to know about the transgender oh the picketing of festivals and the death threats to the independent musicians and the raging lines yelling we're gonna come in whether you want us in or not and the penetration and the war and the go ahead and delve into it I don't because I've seen it I photographed it I've been there and heard the Oh my God, I have no, and I have, excuse me, excuse me. I would like equal rights for more than one half of the world's population. And I would like acknowledgement in my lifetime, which isn't going to happen, of the largest Holocaust in the history of the world. Unreasonable, you may say, well, didn't ask, didn't ask. That was the conversation that sparked the conversation. Because I bumped into a woman, I don't know her, I've seen her seven times, I don't know. And she's, the first thing that, 60 years old, first thing she says, hovered, she was hovered. And she's got a lovely face, and she's young and free and traveling around, and you know, not, I'm not talking about a, I'm not talking about a, a dugger, I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about supposed to be aware. Hovered over, talked about survival first, I said, you didn't survive anything if you're still fucking talking about it. A hundred years later, so let's go to. Then she mentioned God. I was like, yeah, of course. And then she mentioned all kinds of therapy. I was like, okay, okay. And I said, that's just utterly ridiculous. It's just you. It's utterly ridiculous. Every. It's utterly ridiculous what you're saying. And the discussion, the discussion organically, very beautifully ensued. And there it is. And there was a. And she said, there's nobody to have the discussions with. And I said, I know. Get used to it. That's why I wasn't going to have. Any more? You, you want to know? Every three days, when I say I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not talking, because it's not worth talking about. It's not worth talking about because of the the, the disgusting mediums now, where cowardice is 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 more than possible. It's just amplified and hatred, and you can't say this, and you can, and the fucking goddamn censorship by the. And when you say gay, say gay boys. Don't say gay girls because they're they're nowhere. They're not getting married on TV. They're not fucking owning TV stations. I know Andy. Andy's the gay boy mafia. Him and Anderson. They own fucking everything, and now it's that's what. And, and what did they do? What is what is his franchise? The war, women at the worst light, the worst light you could fucking shine on goddamn women. Of course, I mean, come on. And then I'm not allowed to use a pronoun. Fuck off. I will call whatever I want to call whatever the fuck I want to call. And that's the worst part of this. That's why, you know, in the in the words of well, almost every man that I you. What I heard yesterday alone, what I heard yesterday alone about women's asses walking down the strip, but what I heard yesterday alone, what I heard yesterday alone every day as a almost 60 Bruce who has not been lying, who has not been lying and doesn't just identify. It has nothing to do. Allow people to get used to what they want to get used to. Do not impose 
Do not impose your morality or your anything. Did this thing stop? Did this thing stop? Or is it just going slow as molasses? I'm not losing this. And when I tell you, if there is a big gap of complete and absolute fucking silence because the internet blows, this isn't the internet, though. There should be no gap in anything. No, it is the arrogance that you that you kick the door down with, the fact that you are going to be the revolution, not of women, the transgender community. Go ahead. Do what you want, but not of women. You cannot take that on. You do not, whether you identify or not, you might want to sit down for a moment and listen a bit and learn, even though you... I don't know how many you've fucking had. 65? I don't know. It doesn't matter. It is, it is the, the approach. It is the glorification. It is the women creating the hero again. In this case, I don't know. Heroin? Yes. The drug of fucking absolutely not thinking when it comes to, you know what, you know what, when I opened the Huffington Post and I saw it in the only time I've ever seen it, certainly in the block letters that I did, her story, my heart, brain snapped, snapped. Our, her story, which if you even use that word, you're considered, uh, what it, I'm not going to use his language about Nazis and feminism. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend my fucking energy explaining the horrifying, horrifying realities of every woman who lives in the most, 500,000 women raped in the United States last year, in the most free, free country, every, not to mention your pay is going to get cut. If you were anywhere else, well, first of all, you wouldn't be allowed to, wouldn't even want to be a woman because you'd be aborted before you were born. And then get ready for the clitor clitorectomy and then get ready for the slave sex trade and then get ready to be married off and then get ready for the sati where your body's thrown on the burning body of your husband because you're so fucking useless. Still happening daily in India, like uh, gang bus rapes every minute. Throw the 16 year old she dies that was last week or the week before i don't care so if you're going to join the club and it wouldn't be allowed anywhere else it'll only be allowed because oh they'll just embrace 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 the cause anything but our cause that's what women will embrace everything but our cause everything but what did she say this morning well, there's no difference if a woman is of color or not. I said, oh, you're allowed to say black. You're allowed to say that. It doesn't mean you're a racist if you've never used the word. You know, it, it, the color of something is actually the color of something or brown or whatever color it is, whatever you want to say. I don't give a shit. And they don't care what color your vagina is. I said that how many fucking years ago? So how about the cause of women first? No matter the color or the oppression or the country or the tribal or the who gives a shit. It's all under one big umbrella. And now we have experts telling us, number one, what we can and can't say and what pronouns we are no longer allowed to use no matter what. Otherwise, we're glad that things like this are on Twitter. It's called censorship and censorship. And the breasts that work can't show. They can't be shown. They can't be shown. I got a fucking warning when I put up a picture of a fucking mermaid with breasts three days ago. So you can you could do the lingerie, you could do the perfectly bought breasts, and while Angelina is cutting hers off and you're adding yours and everybody's doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing and being glorified, none of the truth is being told. The hormones alone, and that's the example you set for the young transgender children, because death is imminent, 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 I don't know. It's a, you fucking just amp the chances up when you, when you, when you do what they say, the AMA, when you do what they say, the AMA. Oh, ho, ho, ho. well, that is one pissed militant Susan Powder. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, she's, she's pissed today. And of course, what would that be about? Pray tell. Well, that's that Caitlyn Jenner news. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and we got that today. Welcome to Coffee and Cigarettes, by the way. I am the host of Coffee and Cigarettes. You're Chris Crash Jesus Taylor, coming to you live from HTLA Studio 2 in downtown Manhattan. Yes, 55 degrees in Central Park right now and raining. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> but that's why you're all in listening to me. That's right. <clears throat> Oh, yes, and what are you listening to? Well, I've, I've got a show. Yeah, I don't just uh, come here with nothing. Uh, no, I've, I've got a show, ladies and gentlemen. I certainly do. Yes. Oh, right. See, oh, you want me to tell you about what's on the show today? Oh, 
All right, I can do that. Fine. Well, today on the big program, we start it all off with Hillary news. And there may not be too much more Hillary news to go through. Yes, we were worried about another year and a half of it, but no. No, the newest polls are reflecting big troubles for Clinton and Bush. Yeah. And all this is going on, of course, while the USA is turning into a shootout at the OK Corral. Yeah, lots of shooting stories today. The Boston terror suspect has been fatally shot by investigators. Yes. No, not Sarnyev. He's in jail. This is another one. Also, in, uh, we're looking at an off-duty cop who shoots a neighbor's aggressive dog in the head. Yeah. Well, as if that weren't enough, we've also got the story about the Pentagon's ath- anthrax scandal spreading now to Canada and Obama. Oh, yes, Obama news. Praising. Oh, yes, Jesus praising. Caitlyn Jenner's courage. That's right. Yes, the whole world has gone to hell in a handbasket. And we're serving it all up for you right here. So, hey, come on in and grab a cup, have a seat, and light one up, gang. It's coffee time. It is, yes. 3.03 p.m. Eastern, of course, in the big city of New York City. That's where we're coming to you live. Mm-hmm. And you can't have a show called Coffee and Cigarettes and not have coffee and cigarettes. So, of course, I've just lit my first one. Mm-hmm. And enjoyed my first fine cup of Tim Horton's beautiful blend of coffees I'm Enjoying the dark roast today. How about you? Uh, yeah, this show is brought to you, of course, as always, by the fine folks at Tim Hortons, New York City, now with eight fine locations in that city to serve all of your coffee and baked goods needs. Why not get on down there and try them out today? Tim Hortons, always fresh. And, of course, we have the one, the only Jenny McCartney in the booth today, pushing the buttons, making us go. And she's push- pushing the buttons actually on pre-Sonus digital broadcast mixer, the 2442 we use here at Studio 2. Yes, pre-Sonus. You want to check out pre-Sonus for everything in digital and professional audio. It's presonus.com. That's right. Mm-hmm. And now that we've got the obligatories out of the way, I guess it is time to indeed move on to introduction of the three guest slash co-host we have on the show here every day and uh, of course uh, the show wouldn't be really you know damn near half as as good well no it wouldn't uh, yeah absolutely nobody would listen if it was just me there you go so that's why we have them gotta have the the support to the the nobody head man here that's right uh, so, of course, coming to us live from Mill Bay Studios in beautiful Mill Bay, British Columbia, Canada, up there in and around near Vancouver there, is the one, the only Louis Lawless of LDL Films, formerly of Stephen J. Cannell Productions, makers of fine television series, uh, The A-Team, uh, Riptide, Magnum P.I., all that good stuff. Uh, Louis, are you there, sir? He called me, and he <clears throat> called me, he called me, and he kept calling me, and I wouldn't answer the phone. Uh, right, but then you called us back, and now it's all okay. I got lost. H-T-L-A. Oh, H-T-L-A. Right. What the hell is that? Uh, that's the sound of your career going down that toilet. Yeah. Uh, we, we're five steps away from winning the Academy Award. I know. And we did. Yeah, numerous times, yes. Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on... On the show? Well, you can. I, I think we got you covered. We got that delay on, you know, that that delay that I tell you about every single day. So you can you can go ahead and, and do whatever. Jenny's got you covered. Uh, it's about fucking time. Move on. Move on. <clears throat> All right. Well, moving on to about eight blocks down the the, the street here uh, in good old Manhattan comes the one and the only from his sprawling, spacious, handsomely rugged apartment. <laughs> 
Is the one, the only, Gilbert Gottfried. Are you there, sir? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. You, you're ready. Okay. That's what you're saying. Yes. All right. Well, here we go. I'll, I'll let you do the intro. And this is, I fucked that up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I give you a chance. Yes. And you blow it. Yes. Every time. <laughs> Every time. I'll, uh, try that again. Hi, I'm Gilbert Gottfried. Of course, I had to say that up front because a lot of you are probably looking at this going, Oh, look, it's Gwyneth Paltrow. How'd they get her to do it? <laughs> well, <clears throat> down here in the city, we call that with money. Yes. yes. <laughs> so thank you. Welcome, Gwyneth, to the show. <laughs> thank you. And, of course, coming to us from his beautiful, sprawling home uh, somewhere in the mysterious jungles of Malibu, California. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there he is. The one, the only, George Takei. George, welcome to the show. I'm George Takei, and uh, when I'm walking down the street, people shout out, Hey, Sulu. So I'm no more as Sulu right. than as George Takei. Which is what I really am. Nah, screw that. You're Sulu. <laughs> <laughs> you you always have been Sulu. You, yes. <laughs> you always will be Sulu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do you think I'm uh, sexually aroused by uh, Mr. Shatner? I know you are, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> I did not sleep with him. Well, you say that now. <laughs> you know, you, you, you say that now, and I, I just kind of... Same thing. That's what I'm thinking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, it's great to have you here, George. Thank you. I think it's a treat to be here talking with you. Um, okay, good. Good. I like that. I, I thought he was going to say something nasty like Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, and once again, uh, a, a very, very, very hope he had a wonderful frickin' birthday uh, yesterday, the one, the only, Morgan Freeman. And sir, if there's one thing I would say to you, it is effing funny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. So glad to have you guys all here today, yes. and uh, it's uh, it, it's good to, uh, to to be reunited once again in this uh, beautiful, beautiful, wonderful summer day of fifty five degrees and uh, rain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move to California. Damn it! Can you give me any help for twenty five thousand uh, dollars? I don't think so. I go a half an hour. Do I get fifty thousand? Fat chance. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the the one the only Mr. Sulu doesn't get paid that much. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. True story too. Uh and of course Jenny is in the booth and yes Gilbert she is topless. No you can't come down. Yes. There you go. Just getting that <laughs> getting that out of the way right now because he he always wants to come down and and see. <laughs> but uh trust me, sometimes there there's things in the studio here that you don't want to see. And Caitlyn Jenner stopped by yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Not even kidding. Not even kidding. No. Uh, yeah, so today on the big show, lots of stuff to cover, and uh, we're, we're going to probably go long. Is that okay with you, Gilbert? Yes. Good. I don't care anyway. Okay. <laughs> Well, of course, starting off the show today, of course, uh, we, we always like to, uh, you know, start off with our, our Hillary news when we can, well, when we can get it, you know, yes. that's, you know, you can't always get good Hillary news. <laughs> <laughs> But but as it as it so happens today we have some really really good Hillary news. Yes, yes we do. Probably not anymore. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> well, the polls are reflecting a lot of troubles here for Clinton and Bush. Of course, I could have told you that for a little Scooby Doo do trip there last month in Iowa with her five coffee goers. <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's official today. Yes. <laughs> yes, a pair of new polls reflects presidential long-term challenges for the best-known presidential candidates in, East, in each party. 
Yes, the best known. That's why there was she goes to restaurants completely unnoticed. <laughs> <laughs> And, of course, uh, she only had five turnout for coffee. Yes. Right. <laughs> I think they were actually there anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, Democrat Hillary Clinton and Republican Jeb Bush. Thank God, America, don't make the Bush mistake again. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, I am referring to the Bush family and the uh, last president we had from that lovely regime. Yes. <laughs> that man himself is a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, often on this show, I, I often cite that uh, he is the man who pulled the door that you push and walked into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Power tends to corrupt. Yes. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, Louis, this isn't, uh, this isn't so much power as it is physics. Uh. <laughs> but where am I going? I, I have to get back to the damn real story here. Yes. Of course, the real story is a CNN ORC poll that shows Clinton dogged by questions about missing emails, big money contributions to Bill Clinton's foundation. Well... All of that has seen her numbers drop on such issues as, yes, I'm going to say it, trustworthiness. <laughs> yes, America just doesn't seem to trust her. Funny that. <laughs> I don't quite understand what's going on. Well, a growing number of people say she's not honest and trustworthy. 57%, in fact, up from only 49% in March, which wasn't freaking good anyway. <laughs> Yeah, less than half feel she cares about people like them. 47% down from 53 last July, and more now feel she does not inspire confidence. 50% up from 42% last March, CNN reports. The ABC News Washington Post survey shows similar problems with the Dem Democratic front runner. She's slipped underwater in personal favorability for the first time since her unsuccessful run for the presidency back in 2008, ABC reports. She's deeper in the hole for honesty and trustworthiness, down five points in just two months and 12 points since the last year. That said, the polls show Clinton has a massive lead over Democratic primary opponents Bernie Sanders, Martin O'Malley, and other unknowns. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Clinton also leads political Republican challengers. Those, those those margins have really shrunk in the most recent weeks. Whom the Republican nominee might be remains an intriguing question, as the well-funded, well-organized Bush also so shows slippage in his polls. The big reason? I'm gonna, I, I called it, but now it's actually in print right here in front of me. The family name. Yes. <laughs> You know, and, and, and like I said back in 2009 when he actually did it, you can't pull a door that you push, walk into a wall, and retain any credibility. You, you can't. <laughs> you just can't. Yes. Well, yeah, you'd know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's okay, Gilbert. You're a comedian. You're supposed to. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I can see Gilbert is the president of the United States. <laughs> <clears throat> I did not sleep with him. Uh, you would if he was the president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, CNN does report that only about half of Americans say Jeb Bush is a lot like his, well, special brother. <laughs> Yes, former President George W. Bush, their father, George H. W. Bush, also served as president. But most, 56%, say his connection to two former presidents would make him less likely to back him for the presidency, CNN adds. Just 27% say that that connection would make them more likely to back the former Florida governor. One result is very tight. Unformed race among Republicans with six or more top candidates well within the margin of error. Bush, who only scored 21% in March, is now down to 10%. <laughs> Holy shit. I, I think I've got better numbers and I'm Canadian. <laughs> 
wow, 10%, according to the ABC poll. Yeah, smack alongside that other well-known famed one, Scott Walker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and of course, Rand Paul is a scant 11%. Yes. <laughs> Well, Marco Rubio joins Bush at 10. <laughs> Mike Huckabee, yeah, he's got, well, 9%. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and believe it or not, famed astronaut Ted Cruz is sitting in the basement with Ben Carson at 8% each. <laughs> Oh, it's a, it's a sad day. You know, I think we're probably going to see a situation where, well, I don't know, we we probably could see, sadly, Donald Trump be the next president <laughs> of the United States, and uh, that that, my friends, is is well, it, it's it's scary. Use power. That's why power is corrupt, and it is. We see it every day. We see it in every job. It's the same thing. Well, and we're talking about Trump. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Power tends to corrupt. Right. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. You you bet. And uh, if there's one man who needs to become a better man all around by being shot in the head, it's definitely Trump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, regarding 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 Donald. Yes, yeah, that's what it'll be. Yes. Yes, Harrison Ford. <laughs> in regarding Henry, there yeah. were a bunch of movies that came out at the same time. Harrison Ford becomes a better husband and father and an all around man yeah. because he gets shot in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshitters never keep your mouth shut. Always husking, always looking for something to do and, and putting things together. That's that's a f American. Look how they took the country away from England. Well, yeah, you've got to always throw England in there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well. There was another movie where Richard Krenner right. becomes a better policeman and man because he gets raped. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And and you know they could actually do a remake of that movie right now. We could get uh, Caitlyn Jenner in there to play his part yes. there. And, uh, he, he'd actually like it. Yeah. Oh, I feel like such a woman. Yes. <laughs> oh boy. Well, we got uh, Boston Terror news, and no, it's not that Sarniev likes the size of his new cell. <laughs> And, of course, it's not that HGTV is going to do a special DIY remodeling of his cell. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not doing that. But it is Boston Terror News, none, all the same. Yes, none the same. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> well, an FBI agent and Boston Police De Department officer early Tuesday fatally shot a man who had been part of a terror investigation. The man, who was not immediately identified, was allegedly wielding a military-style knife in a busy parking lot on the city's southwest side and refused repeated demands to drop the weapon. You know, how many action movies do we have to have the line, you never bring a knife fight to a gunfight? <laughs> yeah, you, <or> not, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you would think they would kind of smarten up. Yes. Never, <laughs> never bring that knife to a gunfight. Yeah. Well, this guy uh, brought a knife to a gunfight. Yes. And he refused repeated demands to drop the knife at the gunfight. Yes, when the agent and officer opened fire. <laughs> Well, the Boston Police spokesman and officer Stephen McNulty said, McNulty said the suspect was a person of interest in an investigation headed by the FBI's uh, local joint terrorism task force. McNulty said that the Boston police officials acknowledged that the FBI was on him. Uh, the officer described the inquiry as active and ongoing and, uh, yeah, just uh, unloaded there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's an active and ongoing investigation. 
Click. Okay, investigation's over. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we know it's him. Yes. Because <laughs> we've shot him now, and it goddamn well better be. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and if if that weren't enough to make you go, what the hell? You know, we got all the school shootings. Um, yes. We got the university shootings. Yes. We got the college uh, shootings. Yes. We've got the the shopping mall shootings. Yes. We've got the well, we've got shootings all over the place, including well, shootings are now the termination of an investigation. <laughs> 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 well, you you might ask yourself as an American. Can it can it get any worse? Yes. You know, can there can there can there be, you know, we've we've got enough shooting going on. I, yes. I think, <laughs> I think we're I think we're probably covered there. Yes. Well, the answer would be no. <laughs> <laughs> Story comes to us from WTLV TV, Jacksonville, Florida. An off-duty officer, yes, off-duty, not working on an active investigation. Yes. <laughs> Well, was uh, apparently investigating his neighbor's dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jacksonville, Florida. A dog's owner is petitioning to have an off-duty Jacksonville Sheriff's Office sergeant held accountable for fatally shooting her dog in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, C. Bradley Shivers called the police Friday and explained to officer, two officers that the dog named Goose had run into his backyard through a hole in the fence while he and his family were around the pool. According to police, Shivers told officers he promptly found a rake and attempted to run the dog off. He said he'd have several run-ins previously with the animal, and a rake usually worked. However, Shivers said the dog would not, quote, back down and kept circling his pool, barking with aggression. After that, Shivers ran into his home and retrieved his agency-approved personal Glock 27... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> with the uh, sheriff's office issued rounds inside. Yes. And uh, before opening fire, though, Shivers told police he had tried to scare the dog off again with the rake, not shooting into the air like some redneck. <laughs> <laughs> well, according to police, Shivers slipped in the soft dirt around his pool deck and fell. He then told police the dog lunged at him and he opened fire, hitting the dog in the head. After the shot was fired, Goose's owner, Chelsea Pavish, 23 years old, arrived at Shiver's backyard. She took her pet to an animal hospital where he was pronounced dead at the uh, arrival. After the shot was fired, um, yeah, I already said that. Uh, uh, <laughs> after the, uh, the radio DJ was shot in the head, he repeated the paragraph. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we heard the shot. I feel sick, concerned, helpless, Pavish said. Well, you should be. You're unarmed. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pavish said she got Goose, a basset hound mix. Really? A basset hound? This cop was afraid of a little basset hound? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I just looked at the, the picture that they've got in the story here, and it looks like this, this you know, big, monstrous, freaking, uh, I don't know, mastiff, pit bull thing yes. cross or something it, it looked like a dangerous dog i guess that's just an archive pick <laughs> <laughs> yeah a basset hound yeah. <laughs> <laughs> N- next you, you know what it's going to be now it's going to be a rash of worcestershire ter- terrier uh killings now <laughs> Oh, the man blew away my little Yorkies. Yes. <laughs> you, you'd almost need a sniper scope on that uh, gun to hit that dog. It's so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff's going to be like, yeah, I got the Chris Kyle scope on my pistol. <laughs> 160 confirmed dog killings. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, Pavish said she got Goose, a basset hound mix, from the city shelter four months prior to the shooting. I guess adoption does result in long, happy lives. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, Pavish questions Shivers' account, wondering how, if the dog was so aggressive and such a threat, Shivers would run inside to find a gun before trying to shoo Goose away with a rake. She did not witness the shooting herself and had no further comment. Pa- oh, yes, she does, actually. She's- <laughs> <laughs> she said she hasn't had problems with Shivers in the past, but she blamed a sergeant, saying he neglected to fix his broken fence. Yes. <laughs> oh, am I detecting a neighbor dispute? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Well... Shivers uh, nor his wife were available for comment. I haven't even gotten so much as an apology, so that would be a good start, Pavish said. Pavish started an online petition against Shivers. Oh, yeah, it sounds like she'd really take an apology. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I can can see it now. Hello? Yeah, I'm Officer Shivers. I'm I'm here to, to apologize for blowing your tiny little hound away. Well, 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 that's a good start. I, I appreciate that. So so we're all good? Everything's good now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yes, it, it's good with you and me, but, well, there's these four million people on my GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> they all want to see you dead, and then there's the contract that... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she started an online petition against him seeking justice in her dog's death. She wants Shivers to be held accountable. She is more than halfway to her goal of, there you go, 2,000 signatures. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Well, a spokesman for the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, Melissa Melissa Bugida, said that although the officer was on his own personal property off-duty and used his personal firearm, the department will be looking into this complaint. Well, isn't that reassuring? Yeah. <laughs> One of your officers is blowing dogs away at home. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you, you might want to look into that. I don't know. <laughs> well, no charges have been levied against Shivers in the incident or the subsequent report. Animal Control did not respond to the scene because they were scared. <laughs> There you go. We're going to go for a commercial break, our first one of the day. Yes. But hey, don't go anywhere. We got tons of stories to cover. And up next, of course, is the big, 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 of course, big story about the disgusting Pentagon's anthrax scandal, which is now spreading to Canada. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the dirty little peckers mailed it to us, too. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll tell you all about that when we come back. Back in two. You've got it locked to HTLA Radio 1, New York. What if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions? Abundant with rich, fertile soil. What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended, ground, and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness, then brewed in small batches and always served fresh, within 20 minutes just the way you like it now what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love tim hortons always fresh always great tasting coffee Man, I've been to a lot of places over these past 50 years. Seen the whole true north strong and free. Cause I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Cooksville, Stowville, Bainesville, Bowmanville, Bonneville, Unionville, Oakville, Dunville, Brockville, Boucherville, Melville, Drummondville, Kentville, Grenville, Morinville, Maryville, Parksville, Stephenville, Sackville, Spring Hill, Westville, Walkerville, hanging on a windowsill. Hey! He said, wow. That's a lot of places. I said, hang on, there's more. I've been to Moncton, Picton, Shannon, Vernon, Stellarton, Hamilton, Nipigon, Nobleton, Yorkton, Brighton, Bolton, Beaverton, Brandon, Edmonton, Walkerton, Wyerton, Granby, Miramichi, Charlottetown, Burnaby, Yellow Knight, Whitehorse, Cornerbrook, none of it. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I crossed the prairies, bear, man. I breathed the mountain air. I've traveled, I've done my 
share, man. I'm an everywhere man. Check it out. Ottawa, Wawa, Mattawa, Chippewa, Moose Jaw, Oshawa. Some said the U.S. has lost its innovative power. We said America is lighting the way as the innovation nation. Singular insights, superior execution. That's the power of global connections. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Voted top global research firm, 2011, 12, and 13. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of dollarshaveclub.com. What is dollarshaveclub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. <laughs> So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are dollarshaveclub.com and the party is on. I've been so inspired by being in New York because everything from what people are wearing on the street to the way they're interacting with each other to drive through the West Village at, at night and you see a couple kissing on the street or you see someone fighting outside their apartment or you see so much humanity on a daily basis that even if you're not inspired by your own life that day, you can be inspired by someone else's life. You got that long hair sleep. There's only one place to get more Taylor. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. We hugged in the elevator, and I still have an erection. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I remember... uh, now, I remember uh, sitting next to you on a plane. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and and I was flying out to L.A. to audition for some movie that I didn't get, which was fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I, I remember I was reading the script, and you said to me, you said, oh, what are you reading? And I said... Oh, it's uh, some John Travolta comedy. (laughs) 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 Called The Experts. Yep. And and, uh, it's uh, it's about two young hip Americans who get kidnapped by Russian spies to teach them how to act like Like young hip Americans. Americans. (laughs) And you... Uh, being a fortune teller, said, oh, that sounds like a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and of course, indeed, we found out it uh, ultimately, because they actually made it without you, it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's okay. It's, it's better that you weren't in it. Yes. Yeah. 
Welcome back to the big show today. Of course, your coffee and cigarettes, Tuesday Espresso on HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk. 55 degrees right now in Central Park and raining. And uh, yeah, we're, what do I, what do I got to say? We're, we're just enjoying our summer. That's, that's what we get. It's not like the 92 right now in uh, beautiful Malibu. No. <laughs> But you know that that's that, that right there actually shows George's dedication. Yes. Yeah, because I mean, you know, he could be out having oily man sex with Brad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and of course he chose to be here with us today. Yeah. There you go. See, so, you know, when when our our guest co-hosts are are turning down oily man sex <laughs> You know, just just to be on the show, that's that is how I know I've made it. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> well, welcome back to the show, of course. And uh, before we move on to the uh, next story, of course, which is uh, the filthy, filthy, disgusting Pentagon's dirty anthrax in Canada. <laughs> Of course, before we move on to that, yes. we uh, do have to uh, go to our eye in the sky. <laughs> yes, our, 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 it's time for the coffee and cigarettes afternoon rush traffic report <laughs> <laughs> from the one and only Brock Favors. Brock, take it away. Hello, everybody out there. This is Brock Favors with Traffic on the Ones. Chad Armstrong is out sick today. So I am filling in for my usual land reports. And uh, I'm up here at the chopper, but I gotta tell you guys, I am loving the view. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god! Oh, oh, no, stop, 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 stop! Oh! <laughs> Woo! All right. <laughs> well, we are, um, uh, we are over the tent, and it's massively clogged down there like a pint of maple syrup on a cool November morning. And we do. Oh! Okay. Okay, I am uh I am very sorry folks. <laughs> it's a little bit of a bumpy ride up here. We are now <laughs> approaching the 405 and uh, where the left lane is blocked by a mattress. So somebody is uh Gonna be doing a little return to Ikea later today. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, please! Oh god damn! Oh, get me out this motherfucking <laughs> love machine right now! Oh no, black people ain't meant to be in the sky! We ain't meant to be in the sky! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh mama, help me, mama! Yeah. Right now, ain't nobody going down this. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, folks. I'm very sorry, brother. But I'm losing my shit up here. Actually, you have every right to. We're about to crash. Oh, <laughs> and once again today, like every day, our condolences go out to Brock's family. <laughs> and now we can move on with this bitch. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, in Washington today, the Pentagon has learned that additional samples of live anthrax were sent to three laboratories in, yes, Canada. Two defense officials confirmed Monday evening. That means that specimens of the deadly Bacillus anthracis have been sent to labs in 12 states, the District of Columbia, and three other countries. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Nothing says loving like send them the mail. Yes. <laughs> Well, the samples came from the U.S. Army lab at Dugway Proving Ground in Utah. Scientists there thought they had been shipping inactive strains of the deadly spores for research purposes. When they were interviewed <clears throat> from under their uh, turbans, they were... <laughs> it was, of course, uh, deemed to be an Al-Qaeda plot. Yes. yes. No, I, I just made that up. No. 
Well, if inhaled, anthrax spores can be lethal, even with treatment sparking a high fever and other flu-like symptoms. Biosafety expert Richard Ebright at Rutgers University has branded the blender, quote, gross intelligence and gross negligence. There's, there's, there's some gross intelligence for yes. you. Yes. I don't even know why that is there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thus far, nobody has been sickened by the inadvertent shipment, said a senior Defense Department official who has been briefed on the matter, but not authorized, of course, to speak publicly, so his name will be withheld. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Military investigators are continuing to comb through anthrax samples and records determine to determine if more potentially deadly vials have been shipped, the official said, adding that more labs may have received it and just not know it yet. The number of laboratories known to have mistakenly received samples of the live anthrax has grown to at least 28 labs in 12 states and the District of Columbia, the Centers for Disease and Control and Prevention, said Monday. CDC bioterror lab regulators and the Pentagon are investigating how the lab in Utah failed to recognize it hadn't thoroughly killed specimens of anthrax before shipping them to labs in the U.S. and abroad. And potentially, uh, according to this, for the last several years. Okay. <laughs> Well, an email that the CDC officials sent to the state officials Friday raises the prospect that the standard procedure that labs at the U.S. Army's Dugway Proving Browns in Utah use to kill anthrax spores isn't fully effective. We have concern that the inactivation procedures, when followed properly, are inadequate to kill all spores. The U.S. government is developing an approach to securing such possible samples from misuse, wrote Daniel Sosen, deputy director of the CDC's Office of Public Health Preparedness and Response, in Friday's email to state officials that was obtained by USA Today. Earlier Monday, CDC spokesman Jason McDonald said the investigation is ongoing and the agency can't comment on what issues it has found with Dugway's inactivation process until the investigation is concluded. So you folks in Ferguson should just go home. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be another one of those 11 day investigations yes. yeah. <laughs> well, the labs known so far to have received samples of anthrax that appears to have not been fully killed are located in California, uh, Washington DC Delaware, Massachusetts, Maryland, New Jersey New York, Tennessee, Texas, Vermont Virginia and Washington and Wisconsin as well as now Canada South Korea and of course we can't forget our brothers down under <laughs> Yes, Australia. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so they've they've all got the anthrax and they've got us to thank. You. You're welcome. <laughs> well, moving on today, uh, we've got uh, well, kind of a uh, um, well, yeah. Uh, this this goes to another one of those uh, you know stories. Um, <laughs> Yes, a student confesses to killing his mother over an argument about his grades. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You probably heard it here first. <laughs> well, authorities say Tyler Ryan, a 22-year-old biology student at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, confessed to killing his mother following an argument about his grades. Yes, Mentone Police Chief Brad Gregg told CNN that Blancet called... 911 Friday afternoon when authorities arrived they found of course scratches on Tyler his mother 45 year old Sherry Ann Blancet was found of course dead in the backyard a victim of blunt force <laughs> <laughs> I guess the moral of the story is there don't be scratching your boy yes <laughs> Yes, well, according to the Times Journal, Tyler allegedly told authorities that he and his mother had been attacked in the backyard of their home. However, after an intensive investigation, Tyler confessed to striking his mother with a baseball bat and killing her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was arrested and charged for murder Saturday morning. Usually, we'll have calls where a parent has whipped a child because of grades. A child has run away because of bad grades. But we never had anything like this happen before, says Sheriff Jimmy Harris telling WAFF. Blancet's father, Stacy Blancet, was not at the scene. He told CNN that his son had been home for several weeks and they were waiting for his grades. I guess that's where the baseball bat was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
<laughs> now, Harris is still asking the public to come forward with any information which may help investigators, despite Tyler's confession. It's just one of those things you can't explain. We'll never be able to explain what went through his mind, why he snapped and did this, Harris told WAFF. Tyler is currently being held at DeKalb County Jail. His bond has been set at $500,000. Well, we may not be going, know what's been going through uh, his mind, but we certainly know Louisville was going through moms. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where's my badumcha? Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> well, we've we've got to move on to it, and uh, it, it's it's actually the time to do it now. Yes, uh, we're 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 moving into the whole transgender world of shit. Yes. <laughs> But but not directly. Of course, we're not going to sit here and talk about Caitlyn Jenner and her courage and her effing bullshit and <laughs> <laughs> in in her her cover appearance yesterday and her debut on Twitter. Uh, of course, uh, beating President Obama's his first day on Twitter uh, by 1.28 million followers, uh, following the the. Handsome, uh, handsome woman uh, in, well, I, I think they could have at least tucked the bundle under. I, I think, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, if they're trying to sell us on this whole, oh, Bruce is a woman now thing. Yes. Get rid of the bundle. <laughs> 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 you, you just might want to get rid of the bundle. It's yes. just an idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, in our uh, shining uh, section of Obama news, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he came out today and he is, of course, supportive of the fiasco that is Caitlyn Jenner's transformation. <laughs> 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 Yes, the transformation, of course, from Bruce Jenner, former Olympic triathlete, to, well, we like to call her around HTLA Studio 2 here. We like to call her Juice Brenner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We do, we do realize that's a little bit of a stripper name. But yes. <laughs> they get f***ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. I don't know. I would think like more people by the millions now wouldn't love them. I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, the president does believe that Caitlyn Jenner has shown tremendous courage. Well, here it is, Prez. Why don't you stick a medal on her chest and send her back into battle? <laughs> Of course, this wasn't directly from the president, of course. No, no, no. Yes. No, no. He, he won't waste his time talking about shit like this. <laughs> this, of course, comes from uh, press secretary Josh Ernest. <laughs> and he said the president supports the views expressed by the Barack Obama Twitter feed operated by the political group Organizing for Action, which said, quote, It takes courage to share your story. Yeah, that's it. That's all it says. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, if you if you didn't know, and I I'm I'm pretty damn sure you do. Yes. <laughs> yes. Caitlyn Jenner made her debut Monday via a well, it, it's the Vanity Fair uh, article and and Getty's photo shoot and everything else. I, I prefer to call the magazine now Insanity Fair. Yeah. <laughs> Well, of course, this was all set up ahead of time. Yes. Uh, Twitter uh, already had her, uh, his, its, I don't know, he, he's still got his bits. Why are they calling him her? What? <laughs> <laughs> and and on top of all that, on top of the fact he's got his hairy balls? Yes. Uh, let's not mention he still hasn't had that 30% pay cut yet. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I would submit to the court. <laughs> yes, Vanity Fair has their first male cover. <laughs> Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Louis. Let's get back to Bruce. He well, needs love, Chris. Come on. Well, I know. You got you to dispense more love from yourself. All these people are, are hurting here. 
they can go on hurting. I'm not. I'm not loving Bruce. I, I'm not. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> her staged, set up, completely bought and paid for verified new Twitter a- a feed yesterday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, garnered one million followers in a little over four hours, breaking, uh, well, poor Obama's record set back on May 18th. <laughs> with, of course, his new personal POTUS handle. See, now, now Bruce Jenner gets his handle cut off and, and he gets... <laughs> <laughs> well, Ernest said Obama isn't too worried about losing the Twitter record. It was good while it lasted, he joked. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of have a funny feeling that he is sitting, a broken man right now in the Oval Office, crying, literally on the floor, kicking and punching the floor. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, th- I think that's what he's doing. I, I believe that. Yes. I, I do. He, he's been beaten by a man-woman thing. <laughs> it's like he could take uh, Bruce Jenner around to schools and, and play like, what is it, class? <laughs> well, it's got a bulge, but it's got lady bumps. I, I don't... <laughs> Yes. Well, moving on today, of course, we have the uh, story for you about the woman who, uh, well, she had an encounter with a whale and, uh, well, ended up with a a broken neck. We could do that, but she's just a woman. She's not a woman who used to be a man, so (laughs) we're not going to do that. But what we are going to do is we're going to talk about some hurricane forecasts. Yes. Yes, and how they have a dangerous downside and let me tell you, this story does not blow. Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So we're going to go for our first, uh, second, yeah, first, second, and third uh, commercial break. Yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll just keep going for commercial breaks, uh, whatever. No, it's time for our second one. We're going to go, and then we'll come back. We'll do the hurricane. Hor- yes, th- we'll do the hurricane forecast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what the hell you call it, but we're going to do it. We'll be back in two. You've got it locked to New York's best talk, HTLA Radio 1. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. Or 10 at night. In Chilliwack, B.C. Or St. Peter's, Nova Scotia. It could be Michelle. Or Murph. Or Jen. But whenever. Wherever you order that cup of Tim Hortons premium blend coffee, you know that it's always. 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 Fresh. From Newfoundland and Labrador to Vancouver Island, Tim Hortons, a coffee all our own. When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the best part was the shower. 
My, my wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towels. Shower curtain. Define, define that whole vacation, whole vacation for, her. for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. Some said the U.S. has lost its innovative power. We said America is lighting the way as the innovation nation. Singular insights, superior execution. That's the power of global connections. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Voted top global research firm, 2011, 12, and 13. I've been so inspired by being in New York because everything from what people are wearing on the street to the way they're interacting with each other to drive through the West Village at night and you see a couple kissing on the street or you see someone fighting outside their apartment or you see so much humanity on a daily basis that even if you're not inspired by your own life that day, you can be inspired by someone else's life. You got that long hair, slick back, white t-shirt and I got that good girl face and a tight little skirt a tight little and we skirt. go crashing down we come back every time cause we never go out we of never style go. we never go out of style take me out there's only one place to get more Taylor We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Inevitably, you know, that question comes up. But, yeah. I, you know, I tell people the gift of Star Trek is the fact that my professional colleagues, my co-workers on uh, Star Trek became lifelong friends. We are like a family. But, right, uh, you know, like every family, you have your <laughs> crazy <laughs> uncle. Oh yeah. Hey you, Joe Jones. <laughs> hey you, Cary Grant. That's <laughs> a canter. <laughs> hey you, Joe Jones. Hey you, Michigan. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. I wasn't expecting that reaction. No, I I wasn't either. <laughs> Well, welcome back to the big show. Of course, your coffee and cigarettes Tuesday espresso for this Tuesday, the second of June, twenty fifteen. Fifty five degrees right now. Central Park still raining, and we're still here. That's right. HTLA Radio One, New York's best talk. Yeah, that's yeah. That's that's what I meant to say. New York's best. Yeah. There, <laughs> there you go. That's. Uh... I've been on enough radio shows <laughs> to know that in the middle of an answer. The guy is like checking the board and looking over notes sure, and well. talking to other people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, now yeah, you're impressed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. Because you're just sitting in your apartment. I'm the one doing it. <laughs> 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 That's right. I am the one doing it. And uh, that's too bad. I'm... Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. You don't know it, but but we all do. Gilbert, what is my name, Godfrey? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that, I'd like to have that as my slogan in right. life. Well, there you go. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. About, about fucking time. Move on. Move on. <sighs> Fine. Yes. I'll move on. Freaking. <clears throat> We'll we'll move on. Uh, absolutely, we'll move on. And do you think I'm going to tell you about that hurricane story? Not a chance. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they get f***ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. No, no, we know, Louie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I'm I'm not doing a story. It's it's a dumb one. And uh, well, I mean, you got a big titted blonde in here feeding up the story. <laughs> You're going to kind of have to take what you get. Yes. You, you, you just do. You know, so, you know, I put up with it because I keep her topless. I just... <laughs> 
but I, I need something to keep me on the straight and narrow. And whenever I need something to keep me on the straight and narrow, yes. I always go to uh, George telling me about Bobby. Go ahead, George. Tell me about Bobby. The boys around me were uh, saying things like, um, Sally is cute or Monica is hot. Oh, yeah. And I thought Sally and Monica were nice, <laughs> but who really got me excited was Bobby. Yeah, I know. Tell me tell me ab- about the things about Bobby that really get you off there, George, and that way I'll be able to continue on with the show with Jenny's erect nipples staring yeah. me. <laughs> Staring me in the face. Just what? What particularly w- was yeah. exciting was he had blonde uh, forearm hair, mm-hmm. and he was tan. Right. That glistened. That's yes. when, uh, <laughs> what uh, caught my eye when I first saw him. Uh, he had his t-shirt on, but you can see that he had great pectoral uh, t-shirt. And then to see it off, and mm-hmm. his whole gorgeous body. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, George, for straightening me out. Thank you. I'm, I'm all good. Maybe it's that uh, love hate. Uh, mean, I wouldn't even say either. Uh, I don't think it is. Uh, before we move on, of course, we got some uh, email on the old show here. Uh, yes, we do. Yes, we absolutely do. I just have to uh, find it. Yeah. And we will, uh, yes. Ah, yes. Here we go. Uh, we have an email, of course, for George. Yes. Uh, it's never, never for uh, Gilbert. <laughs> <clears throat> Certainly never for Louie. Didn't you read the goddamn <laughs> script? I sent it to you. No, see, that's why there's no email for, for Louie. Yeah. <laughs> But we've uh, we, we've got some email from a uh, a fan of George's. Yes. Uh, apparently, this uh, guy has been a a fan of George's not so much for his acting, oddly enough, uh, more for his his homosexuality and coming out. Yes. Uh, I guess he admires his courage, or maybe his tight ass. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I don't know which it is, but anyway, the email comes to us from uh, Trevor Cody, and uh, yes. Trevor wants to know, George, uh, the pictures that he has apparently sent you, um, how often do you jerk off to Trevor Cody's pictures? Every every morning. Yeah, excellent. Yes. Okay, well, there you go. We, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there we go. So, so Trevor, rest assured, George waxed you every morning. There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> well, moving on today, the last couple of stories we actually do have. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the real stories, if you will. Yes. Yes. Well, we have that NTSB report from the uh, Amtrak crash there last month. Uh, which, of course, has now confirmed that uh, it was no equipment issue on the Amtrak crash. It was all that drunken engineer. (laughs) (laughs) Well, a preliminary report released Tuesday by federal crash investigators found no anomalies with the braking system of the train or the signals at the track and at the site of the May 12 Amtrak derailment that killed eight passengers and injured 200 other passengers and crew. The NTSB previously noted that the train had been traveling at 106 miles an hour before the emergency brake system engaged. Data from the train's event recorder indicated that the engineer activated the emergency brakes seconds before the derailment, the report says. The Amtrak train 188 was traveling northbound from Washington, D.C. to New York City on May 12th when it derailed at 9.21 p.m. north of Philadelphia. The seven-car, one-locomotive train had just entered a the Frankfurt Junction Curve where the speed limit is 50 miles an hour, not 106, you drunken fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, the NTSB says it's examining the Amtrak's engineer's cell phone and cell phone records to determine whether the engineer made any calls, texted, or sent any messages while operating the train. Although the records appear to indicate that the calls were made, text messages sent, and data used on the day of the accident, investigators have not yet made a determination if there was any phone activity during the time that the train was being operated. Investigators are in the process of correlating the time stamps in the engineer's cell phone records with multiple data sources, including the locomotive event recorder. 
The locomotive outward-facing video recorded radio communications and surveillance video. The NTSB is also investigating whether vandals threw rocks or other objects at passing trains around the time of the derailment. The Amtrak 188 locomotive windshield has impact damage, but investigators have not determined whether the damage was from a thrown object or the crash itself. And the report said the NTSB and the FBI found no evidence of damage caused by a gun, the report said. Amtrak estimates the damage from the crash to be $9.2 million. Amtrak has committed to installing an automatic braking system on all trains on its tracks in the northeast corridor by a congressional deadline of December 31st. And you know they're going to make that one because Congress used that train. <laughs> <laughs> But a section of north, uh, but a section north of New York City, operated by Metro North, the rail line says, won't meet that deadline. Railroads, railroads have been upgrading trains and installing electronics for an automated system along the tracks for years. But industry groups have warned that since 2010, they will miss this year's deadline for having the system on an estimated 60,000 miles of track carrying passengers or toxic chemicals that can't be. Inhaled. Congress set the deadline for the positive train control after a head on collision between a Metrolink commuter train and a Union Pacific freight train that killed 25 and injured 100 in Chatsworth, California back in September of 2008. The Federal Railroad Administration counted about 300 people injured and 10 killed in train accidents each year from 2003 to 2012 without counting highway grade crossings or trespassers walking along tracks. And if if that wasn't uh, enough for you to indicate that these uh, train engineers are just effing morons. <laughs> <laughs> then we go to our next story. Yes. <laughs> and our next story, of course, is Amtrak train crashes into a car in Florida. <laughs> I think it should be short and sweet. Well, that uh, engineer's career now is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are a douchebag. I know. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> well, in Jacksonville, an Amtrak train sliced a car in half Tuesday in the city's Riverside neighborhood, causing only slight injuries, authorities said. But the car was a different story. <laughs> As the car was cut in two, the passenger in the back seat was ejected since, says Richard Elkins with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. The passenger suffered road rash, minor injuries, he said. The driver also suffered minor injuries as well. Both have been transported to a hospital for assessment, but neither victim's name has been released so far. Or any other details of the incident. Again, this just happened about an hour ago. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Do you, do you think they're going to try and blame the train again? <laughs> do you, do you... <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's it's a possibility, you know. They get f***ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. Yeah. That's... <laughs> no, Louie, I think it's more the booze and drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's the booze and the drugs. Yes. Yes. Well, moving on, we've got a story from uh, the Texas Senate voting to allow concealed handguns at state colleges. Well, this should allow for much more OK Corral gunfights. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, the Senate, uh, of course, in Texas, voted on Saturday to pass a bill that allows the concealed carrying of handguns on state campuses. The legislation would permit faculty, staff, visitors, students, and any other mentally challenged. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there, there is a caveat. As long as they're licensed handgun over owners over the age of 21 and have the right to carry a handgun. Yes. Right. <laughs> You, you, you've got to have that. But as long as you got that, yeah, you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bill, of course, still needs to clear the House before it can get sent to Governor Greg Abbott, who is expected to sign it into law. Baylor University rising senior Brian Stanley opposes the new legislation because he's a pansy beta male. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree with the notion that concealed carry on campus would increase safety, says Stanley. More guns doesn't mean more safety. It, it means more instances of improper firearm usage. Go, Bruce Jenner. 
Well, the original bill was amended to give greater flexibility to university presidents, allowing them to create gun-free zones on campus. What the hell do they want to do that for? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the final legislation also now allows private universities to opt out. Uh, bill sponsor Brian Birdwell said that while he revised the legislation now serves to alleviate some of the concerns of those who oppose concealed carry on campus, the intent is still to protect the rights of those who wish to legally carry handguns. Let me be very clear. The legislative intent of the conference report on Senate Bill 11 is for public college campuses to be as permissive and accessible to CHL holders as possible, Bergwell told the Houston Chronicle. The bill has been met with opposition from college officials, legislators, and students. Professor Arnold Lowy, who serves as the George R. Killiam Jr. Chair of Criminal Law at Texas Tech University, voiced his concerns about campus carry to KCBD Radio in 2014. He says, The nature of universities is such that I think guns are incompatible with my own view is that I think they'd be less safe if people were allowed to carry guns, said Lowy. The Second Amendment doesn't permit you to have a gun whenever, wherever, and however you feel like having them. I think certainly one of the places where you could preclude it is on a college campus, Killiam told the radio station. In a letter to state representatives dated April 20th, University of Texas System Chancellor William McRaven argued that the legislation could have a chilling effect when it comes to hiring professors. The presence of handguns on Texas campuses where we could be one of fewer than 10 states to allow this conduct may well cause faculty to be discouraged from relocating from other states, he wrote. Most observers expect Abbott to sign the measure in the coming weeks, though it will not go into full effect until the fall of 2016. And, of course, that is when we will see the fall of the last vestige of education in America. There you go. <laughs> Well, there's the funky music. That's all the time we got, white boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to thank my good buddy, Louis D. Lawless, for hanging out in the show today. It's uh, It was great to have you here. My film, Unrepented, did very well in Europe. I know, and we don't care. <laughs> you know how to spell my last name on the check, right? It's Louis Lawless. Yeah, it, it'll be in the mail. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Also, want to thank my good friend Gilbert Gottfried. Thanks for being here again, sir. Thank you for listening and support the show for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, the one, the only tight ass himself, George Takei. <laughs> uh, I wasn't expecting that reaction. Well, I know, but you got it, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> Well, thank you, George, for being here again. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. It has been a fantastic experience. Well, and you're always welcome back, especially tomorrow, because I need somebody to fill the spot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think it's a treat to be here talking with you. Okay, so uh, just hang on the line for 24 hours and we'll be good to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, that's it. Thank you, guys. And, and thank you, listeners. HTLA Radio 1, uh, New York is best talk. Uh, likes to, to keep its listeners happy. And from the looks of things, everybody's happy. So <laughs> we'll keep it that way. Don't forget, we got a crash talk coming up tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern. Be here or be square. <laughs> and other than that, we'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday Grinder, 3 p.m. Eastern. Have a great day. Radio 1.